Okay. Let's do a materials check to make sure you have everything you need. Sit at your desk, and as I call off what you need, look and make sure that you have it. Art shirt on, your desk covered with newspaper, your long hair pulled back, a paint tray, a large brush, and a small brush. Oh, a drop of water on each paint cake. Two or three paper towels. A container of water. Your sample cards, the eight that we cut yesterday, and your wet on your watercolor packet. And your tray should be under your desk. There's loose paper towels in a long box up on the counter. Okay, does everybody have their wet on wet card out? Now you can paint on either side. You can paint on the side that has the names on it. Or you can flip it over and paint on the back that doesn't have anything on it. I like to do it right here where I can see it. Because you're going to use these cards to help you paint your animal later. If I say, why don't you try the wet on wet technique and you can't remember what it is, you can find your card and look at it and then you'll remember. Okay, so you need to try to follow directions. Please don't get ahead of me. Don't put paint on your paper until I ask you to. All right. Can you all see? Okay, Brooke, Brooklyn, can you turn the lights off behind you, please? Does that help? Yes. Okay. I'm going to explain each technique and how it can be used, and then I'm going to show you how to do it, and then you're going to do it. Okay? The wet on wet <coughs> technique is really good for skies. It's good for the background for jungles. Uh, it's good for a lot of things, but mostly, and we're going to start with the wet on wet technique when we do your animal drawing. Everybody's going to do the wet on wet at first. So I want to show you what it means. Wet on wet means wet paint on wet paper. Okay? Don't do it yet. Just listen and watch. I'm going to use my large brush and I'm going to get my paper soaking wet, like dripping wet, with clear, clean water. Then I am going to put the tip of my brush in the paint. I'm going to make a blue sky and watch what happens. I'm going to touch it. and the water's going to carry it away. Now notice I didn't brush it, I just touched it. Then, if you want it to run a certain way, you can lift it, and it, can you see that? It's going to start to run. If you want it to go this way, it can go that way. And now look at my beautiful sky. Oh, you can't see it. We might have to turn the other lights off too. Chloe, do you know where they are? Okay, now you can't brush over. You have to touch it and it's got to be wet enough so that the water, I'm going to hold it up, so that the water carries it away. Okay? So right now, I want you to paint your wet on wet card, please. Use your large brush, use clean water, get your paper wet, and remember you're just going to touch paint. 
You're not going to brush it on, you're just going to dab it on and you're going to let the water carry it away. And if there's a certain way that you want it to go, you can lift your paper and have the water run the way you need it to. Remember, don't leave your brushes in your water cups. They need to be to the side because it ruins the points. You didn't put Isn't that cool? Now, if it's not running the way you want, you can drip water right on top of it and then let it run. Now, if you're doing a jungle scene, if you have an animal that has a jungle behind it, you're going to use greens and yellows in your wet on wet before we actually put bushes and trees in. Okay, so wet on wet is good for backgrounds and it's good for skies. Does anybody have any questions about wet on wet? Okay, I want you to gently pick it up and put it over in the corner where it can dry while we do our next one. You may want to rinse your brush out. And the next card says wet on dry, so that's the one you want to get. You'll like this one because you're familiar with it. Does this eventually sharpen up? I'm afraid to touch it because sometimes it goes off. <coughs> wet on, if wet on wet paint is wet paint on wet paper, what do you think wet on dry might be? Chloe. Wet paint on dry paper, which is how you should have painted in elementary school. Right? You dip your brush in the paint and then put it right on the paper. So, you can use your large brush or your small brush and paint whatever you want. It can be a flower, it could be a leaf, whatever floats your boat. Be careful not to put complementary colors together. What will happen if you mix complementary colors? They're opposites on the color wheel. What happens if you mix them, Carter? It makes black. It makes black or gray or a yucky brown color. So you don't want to mix opposites on the paper. Okay? So you're just going to paint wet paint on dry paper. I'm going to try to do a leaf. But now I'm going to use wet on wet. I painted it yellow, and while the yellow is still wet, I'm going to touch it with green and let the green just sort of go.
but you don't have to. Now if I wanted to put veins in the leaf, I would have to wait until it was completely dry. It can be a flower, it can be hearts. I don't want you to agonize over it. As long, <coughs> as, long as it's wet paint on dry paper, it will be correct. Donovan, are you doing okay? Yeah. All I right. I I'm doing the autumn leaf on a tree. Oh, that sounds beautiful. It is. Be careful not to mix your complementary colors. Donovan, did you paint the trunk of your tree yet? No, I'm, I'm still working on the leaves. Oh, okay. Well, if you want, just do the leaves because the next thing we're going to do is going to show you how to do tree trunks that have texture in it. Okay. That would be pretty good. Okay. Get your dry brush. What do you think you have to have when you do the dry brush technique? A dry brush. A dry brush. You're going to use your large brush rinse all the paint out of it, then you're going to squeeze every drop of water that you can back into the water cup, okay, without breaking my brush. And then, because it's still wet, the easiest way to dry it is to go to a dry spot on the newspaper and do this back and forth until you don't see any wet streaks anymore. Does that make sense? Push sort of hard. Go back and forth on the paper, and when you don't see those wet streaks, then it's probably dry enough. Excuse me. is dry and I'm going to tell you what this is good for it's good for fur it's good for grass it's good for tree trunks it's good for anything that has texture do you know what texture is texture is how something feels like smooth or soft or prickly or how it looks like it feels so you need your dry brush card, but don't do anything yet. Please just watch and listen, and then you can do it. I want to do a tree trunk, so I think I'm going to turn it vertically. And what I want is I want the paint just on the very, very tip of the brush. Don't do it, though. Don't do it. Don't do it. Not yet. And what I like to do first is I... I dip it in the paint and then I dry it off a little bit on the newspaper to make sure that I didn't get too much paint. Now here's my tree trunk. Donovan, are you watching? Yes. Okay. See the white streaks that it leaves? Or can you? Yeah. yeah. If you can't see it very well, it's not dry brush unless I can see the streaks in it. Okay? So, if you want streaks, you can't put your brush in too much water. Okay, so I, I do want you to make a tree trunk on your card because then we're going to put leaves on it with a different technique.
If you can't see the streaks, it's not dry brush. If you think you have too much paint on your paper, take some of the paint off on the newspaper. Oh, that's a pretty one. And that's dry brush. Can you picture how it would be good for fur on animals? If you wanted to do grass, you could do grass. Actually, I'm going to get the brown off of here and show you about grass. Whenever you do anything green, you usually have to have a little bit of yellow behind it. So, I'm going to dry brush some yellow. I'm going to just flick it like that to make grass around the tree. Then without even washing the brush out, I'm going to dip it in green and I'm going to flick over the yellow grass. And it makes it look 3D. So there's dry brush grass at the base of the tree. Now because you took so long to get ready today, we're going to have to stop soon to clean up. So we've done three. We've done wet on wet, wet on dry, and dry brush. When you finish with your dry brush, rinse the paint off of your brush. And Taylor's row and Ryan's row, you're going to use the front sink. And Timmy's row and Carter's row, you're going to use the back sink whenever you need to wash things off. You're going to clean up after yourself first, and then you're going to do your room job. Okay? Your cards that you've painted, lay them in the top of your tray, not on top of each other, but spread them out so they can dry.
carry it face up so it doesn't drip. Carter, you can't empty the trash until all of these papers are off the desk. Okay. Uh, remember, you're supposed to roll up your newspaper to keep all the nasties inside. If you're ahead, help somebody else. <laughs> You have to wash them and then you give them to those two girls at the corner of the table. Wash your brushes the way I taught you. What about with the pictures too? Really?